All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Small Data SF, and look who I have with me, James, who's the CEO at Cordine. Very excited to chat with you today, and uh, I'm excited to also learn a little about yourself, about what you do, and what gets you here at Small Data SF. Yeah, so so I run a consulting company focused on helping people with their data, mostly BI analytics, net use cases, and things like that. And you know, the vast majority of companies like. You know, point of this conference is that they have small data so right. you know, how do we take advantage of that using the tools that are available you know minimize costs right you know, improve performance reduce like services costs as well so that we can produce more value okay yeah no I think uh, those are fantastic points in terms of what gets you here but I'm also kind of excited to learn a little about uh, uh, you know in in the work that you do how have you been seeing you know, not only just the enterprise leaders, but other folks in the community as well, them being excited about small data, or how does it make small data important? Yeah, I mean, I think that the marketing of small data is actually very useful. Like Jordan has been talking about, like how, you know, a lot of people have big data sets, right. yeah. big data sets, but they're not like, using it actually all at one time. So the individual use case is actually relatively small for you know 95 to 99% of the use cases, maybe even more depending on the company. You know, so so I've worked with some really big, you know, Fortune 10 type companies. They actually have big data. They have use cases where they have to use big data, but then at the same time, the vast majority of their use cases are small data, right? Mm. Can it fit on a laptop? Can it fit on a single server? You know, like I think Jordan did a good job this morning describing that uh, small data is anything that can fit on a single computer, or I think right. he said laptop, but basically what I'm thinking is single computer or node. And, you know, you, know, you look at, you know, even like the tech giants, still a lot of their use cases are, you know, by that definition, small mm-hmm. data. Yeah. And, you know, how does that unlock capabilities by building out tools against that? You know, we got the DuckDB team and we got... Mother Duck and all of them, you know, they're they're kind of pushing that right now. But I think that you know, as as there's more investment there, there's going to be more understanding about how to build like a really powerful system that you know enables more capabilities than what we have right now. That's awesome. Uh, those are fantastic insights. I kind of also, do you think it's more about the machines as well, them getting powerful uh, over the time, and now the that we kind of used to think about big data is now actually the small data. Yeah, this is exactly what it is, right? Yeah. So, like, you know, to the early 2000s, you know, you have, like, single core servers. Right. right? Now, like, you know, you're going to have a server with 512 threads. So, you know, that's, th- you know, two orders of magnitude, almost three orders of magnitude bigger. Right. Actually, I think you can even get a 1,000 threads on a single server now. So, yeah. like, you know, it's three orders of magnitude bigger. Mm. So, like, you know, what you can do today versus what you could do you know, 2003, 2005, it's like completely different. So 20 years, we've made, you know, two orders of magnitude jump. That's awesome. And thanks for sharing those insights. Uh, I'm kind of also excited a little, you know, wanting to learn a little about the use cases. So have you been seeing any specific use cases that you would like to share about uh, around the small data or anything in particular that you've been hearing from different industry leaders in this space you as know, well? Actually, I have one that's kind of like probably controversial for that because <laughs> it's like by definition, it's probably mm. big data, but by actual use case, it's small data. Interesting. So time series data, or IoT data, or things like that generates huge data sets. However, the time frame in which you look over, it's relatively small. I don't care about a year of history for a lot of the questions I'm asking. I care about the last hour, day, three days, one week, you know, maybe a month if I'm pushing it, right? Well, that data set is very different as compared to the one year, two year, three year, you know, viewpoint. And so being able to split out like the, you know, the type of query engine I'm using for, you know, the, the, the smaller time frame, you know, that's where I am using like a lot of small data type techniques because mm. like it minimizes the complexity, it minimizes the cost, improves the overall latency of the system. Right. And we're, you know, we're enabling really interesting capabilities for like manufacturing, right? You want like on uh, manufacturing line processes to run. Right. You, you're not going to wait, at, you know, a minute and a half or two minutes for, you know, the, the Databricks thing to run through the pipe, et cetera. But a lot of the data there is... You know, relatively speaking, it's pretty small. So 
yeah no i think uh, that's something amazing that you kind of sharing and i'm kind of also curious to learn a little about the future how do you see the future of small data where is it going is it going to be like uh, we're going to get more of big data becoming small data and we'll be using just one machine in the future how does that look like i mean i feel like i'm projecting jordan's <laughs> talk right now so like the goal post is moving right yeah. and like i mean i talked about it earlier with the like you know number of threads that a given server has that's only going to keep like increasing right. especially right now with like what amd and uh, you know maybe i would have said it until you know before but you know like what they're doing to increase the capacity on a given node mm. so like that's like the moving goal post of small data and taking away from what you need to do from like a big data viewpoint where you have to distribute the workload so it's a moving target and i think that for the vast majority of companies it's becoming more small data right i love it and uh, i know we have a panel discussion just this afternoon so i'm excited about that as well james uh what's one thing that you would like to share with our audience why should they you know start focusing on small data as well well the goal goal post is moving right right so like do you need that expenditure of like the super complicated system to support distributed you know processing if your data doesn't need distributed processing, right? So I'll just know, simplify it. Yeah, if you it's got less than a terabyte of data, why, right? Exactly. <laughs> you it's like a no-brainer where you need to obviously make sure where you save cost, time, money, like obviously cost. Yeah, anything that adds complexity to a system is like more work that your team has to do to get the job done. So like minimize complexity yeah. and then small data like tooling is about minimizing complexity and enabling more capabilities. So No, I love it. And uh, one more last question for you I, and it has been a pleasure chatting with you James. One question for you is about if people want to reach out and learn more about different things, different topics from you, where can they do this? Yeah, I'm it's probably easiest to reach out to me on LinkedIn, okay. James Wanger. Um you know, look up Cordine, you'll find me through that as well. Awesome. So. All right. So I'm going to let people reach out to you, learn more about small data, but it was such a pleasure chatting with you. Thanks once again for doing this. Yeah, it was nice to talk to you too, Robert. Thank you. Thank you everyone.